Laura Ramirez, welcome to the Pre-Construction Podcast. Hi, how are you? Thank you for having me today. Excellent. Delighted you're able to take part in the Next Generation Pre-Construction Podcast. This is what it's all about. Um, I, I wanted to say, tell, tell the listeners a little bit of the backstory on this. Laura sent me a message. She said, I've just moved from the operations side into pre-construction and I've been listening to your podcast and it's helped me a lot. So th- that's what it's all about. That is literally what the podcast is all about. It's helping either high school students, graduates, even senior people find out a little bit more about this wonderful world of pre-construction uh, and the, the little nuggets of knowledge, inspiration from our guests. It really does go a long way. Um, so rather than me introduce you, Laura, could you please introduce yourself? Hi, um, yeah, I'm Laura and I'm from Venezuela. I arrived to the US eight years ago and I decided to study in civil engineering. Um, and um, I took an in, like an internship, a uh, summer internship as a civil engineer in a, a small subcontractor company that was like mostly like division nine. So like all the finishes and stuff. And that's actually very like, um, that's what got me starting into construction because um, after my internship, uh, they offered me the full time job, and I was like, "Perfect! I'm gonna like full time work as I get my civil engineering degree, and this is gonna be amazing for my resume and whatever." But when I started, I didn't know anything about construction. Like I remember my boss telling me the first day, okay, so yeah, this is your desk and please find the submittals for this project and send them over. And I'm like, what is a submittal? Like <laughs> I was a civil engineer student, so never heard about what was what was the submittal or anything. So obviously that make like a lot of like, what am I studying at school and what am I doing at work? Didn't like, of course, the background helped, but it didn't really match completely. It never and- does. No. It never does. Literally, Laura, no matter what you learn in school, and I think everyone listening will agree with this, especially when their degree, you don't really understand it until you go out and experience it firsthand. But and I love the fact that you, you did that under Division A's. But let's take it back a little bit in high school. So you're going through high school, right? Yes. Was it always going to be construction or or where did that influence come? Oh, no. Um. So my family is basically divided between healthcare and construction. So like I they're like um surveying. My dad was a civil engineer. My uncles and my aunts are like engineers, too. So my dad obviously saw like, oh, you're super creative. I I was like. Uh, no, I want to do healthcare. I want to do healthcare. And my dad, like, but look, architecture might be amazing for you. And I'm like, that I'll never study. No engineering, no architecture, never. And Famous then, last words. <laughs> yeah, that was like, I'll never. And then I came to the US. Um, I finished high school in Venezuela. And then I arrived to the US, as I said, um, eight years ago. And I started studying like, nutrition and then I was like hey like this is not how it was in Venezuela like I don't think this is gonna be the same thing here for me and then I had to like go back home and be like okay I'm gonna study civil engineering and everybody was <laughs> like, yeah, good um yeah I was support everybody was like super supportive absolutely super happy they were like yes like that's gonna be great for you um and now I finished uh, civil engineering and something that's funny is like my dad also went from civil, he graduated as a civil engineer and he ended up working in construction. He was um, a project manager for a Brazilian company called Auto Bridge. And his last project was a, it was the project I was the most like not involved because I was a kid, but I uh, was um, a, uh, a dam of okay. like an electrical dam. And it was like, I would always go like to the office and see everything, never understanding anything. And now I go back and I see the pictures and I'm like, oh my God, like this is like a massive, pr- I'm like, how much is in there? You know, it's, in- it's insane. So that definitely it- like 
Does he do the uh, the usual project manager thing and says, I built that? Yeah. A hundred percent. And um um and then once I started working in construction, um, I realized like this is not the same. I don't think I wanna design. Like I love being part of actually building it. And I talked to my I was in my senior year and I talked to my one of my favorite teachers and I was like, hey, listen, like I'm like I need to start applying for jobs and I'm actually like very like indecisive because I'm I'm in a dilemma because yeah. you know I'm studying civil but I really like construction and it's like I'm not gonna use my civil engineer and he goes like you're gonna use it because you're gonna use it every day and construction like he, at the end of that he was like you can make more money in construction go ahead do it do you like I'm- it being there for two years already do you have the experience? Like, if you go backwards, you're going to lose all of that advantage. And I was like, okay, I'm just going to go and do construction because I really love it. And at school, I liked it, obviously, but I liked the concept of it. I didn't like designing. So that's why I ended up in construction. And it's amazing, right? Well, I'm going to get into it later, but pre construction, it's amazing the amount of people that go and do architecture civil engineering and they decide then that it's not for them the design side is not for them so pre-construction is the perfect fall guy and the perfect space to 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 step into when you were doing the civil engineering and and the design wasn't for you what was your idea what was your idea of actually the construction side of it was construction or sorry pre-construction ever in your in your thought or was it a case of i want to go on site wear a hard hat and 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 well him. Yeah. So when I was in my internship, then full time job uh at the subcontractor company, um I was a project I started as an assistant project manager and then I got um a promotion as a project manager. So although we were like a smaller company, um I had to manage several jobs at the same time. So I will be on job side, but I was obviously I had some time at the office because we didn't have trailers, Um, but I had to go like from job side to job side. And I loved it. Like also, since my background is um, from Venezuela, my first language is Spanish. That helped tons on the job side. So I was like, this is for me. Obviously, I'm not going to lie. At the beginning, it was very hard because you are a woman and you are young and getting superintendents and getting you know like project managers of big gcs look at you and like you don't even speak perfect english you are a woman and you are and you're cute and pretty and little and it took some work to be able to be respected and like taken in account there. But with a lot of work, I did it. Like everybody um, realized that I knew what I was talking about. I think that's for any woman out there that is in operations, that's the biggest thing. Like if you know what you're talking about, just keep pushing, keep being um, polite and, and, you know, don't let anybody step on you, but like people's going to realize that if you know what you're talking about, you're, people's gonna respect it so obviously that was a big thing for me I was like I know Spanish like operations is like the best place for me to be um but then I arrived to New South and they didn't have a project starting for me and they were like okay like just stay in pre-com for two weeks while we assigned you a project and I was like okay cool perfect and I stayed in pre-construction two weeks And my boss asked me, um, so, hey, like, they're going to start assigning you a project, but I just wanted to put out there if you wanted to stay in (laughs) pre We're happy to have you. And I was like, I want to stay in pre I didn't even have to think about it. I was like, I love it because it's the perfect mix between whatever you know in operations, in civil engineering, and, like, all combined. So this is the perfect scenario, right? So this is the problem that we have. So you really, and I'll ask you the question, but I'm, I'm presuming that the first time that you were introduced to pre-con, you were kind of put in there for a couple of weeks, just, just to pass the time. So yeah. this this is the problem that we have. You should have known about pre-construction, and I don't want to be get overexcited saying in high school, 
but definitely within your civil engineering degree. When you went to your boss, your lecturer, and said, listen, I, I think I don't not like the design. I want to go on the construction side. And then he should have said, well, if you like the construction side, you like a little bit of design, you want to get involved in as many projects as possible, you should go to a general contractor or a subcontractor and be a pre-construction engineer. That, that yeah. should have been your path. Unfortunately, <laughs> you had to fall into it, fall in love with pre-construction, and then your boss see real potential for him to ask you. Yeah, and then... Then um something that is funny about that is like before because I was in the uh subcontractor company that I was before, I was obviously a project manager and I had to talk to the estimator all the time. But to me, and then like sometimes since it's a small company, you know, you gotta do everything. And sometimes they would like ask me, like, oh, can you please like make this take do these takeoffs? Can you please check that estimate real quick because we need to send it and I'm busy and I'm like, okay. So I will have to talk to the estimator all the time, even do takeoffs sometimes. And to me, it was like, okay, she's just doing takeoffs and like putting prices on it. You know, that was my idea of pre-con. And then I got here and I was like, wait, what? Like, this is not what I thought it was. Like, you will basically have to build the whole project in your head before it's built. And a, a, a phrase that really stuck with me that I feel like if everybody is presented pre-construction in that way, it was um, Stuart and the president of Beck. Uh, it was in one of your podcasts at the beginning. He said um, pre-construction is where you can make the biggest impact on the project. But to me, it wasn't like, okay, it's not that operations is not important. He's not saying that at all. Nobody's saying that. It's just like, that's the place where if you have great communication between design, the designer, the owner, GC, and obviously subcontractors, you can avoid the most amount of like mistakes, problems, save the most amount of money, understand what the owner needs so you can give them the best value for their money and um and like get whatever they need about that project like fulfilled you know so if everybody will present pre-construction in that way i feel like it will be very different and like then oh yeah i'm just doing takeoffs i'm putting numbers in there you know yeah and so, laura listen that that's ideal right even if it's talked about at all within a your degree i mean i speak to lecturers all the time. They don't even talk about it in a construction management degree. It's a small module within their degree. It should be talked about then and then let people understand the technology, the BIM, the VDC, the data, the data that's involved, the historical data, the technology yeah. that's involved. It's sexy, but we need to talk about it. We need to talk about pre-construction. Yeah. Um, and listen, that's what the podcast about. Stuart's very articulate about talking about that sort of stuff as well. He's amazing. Shout out to, to Stuart. Uh, but the, the thing that gets me, and in fairness to all the big GCs, they are doing like a rotation now. So they're bringing their project engineers. They're putting them in the pre-con for six months. They're putting them in the VDC operations, maybe the safety. Um, so they're giving them exposure to, to everything. Um, but yeah. what was it when you went to pre-construction for those two weeks what was it that really caught your eye and said, you know what, this this really is where I belong? Um, so obviously, uh, doing estimated estimation in a in a subcontractor is completely different than doing estimation in a GC world because uh, as a subcontractor, you just care about your trade, and that was the experience that I had. But um, when I got here, uh, my first uh, project so we do mostly we have like all market sex sectors and I started a multifamily project for my first for my first project and my boss and um, she gave me uh heartscapes and I sit down with her for like 15 minutes and the amount of um you know cooperation between trades that I saw in heartscape for like 10 minutes I was like okay wait this is way more like how you have to understand every single part of the project and be able to coordinate all of that. So the project, in, in 10 minutes that I talked to my boss, she was like, yeah, and then I have to see if the side guy, it's going to do the, yeah, but then, okay, this part is waterproofer. And then, and I saw that, I was like, 
what in the world? Like, it's just insane. It's so good. Then another friend, like another coworker comes in here, like, yeah, sit down with me for another 10 minutes. Yeah. But you know, like, this is not just like take off. Like, you need to like develop your sales abilities because you need to make, you know, the subs to get like interested on the project so that will be. And I was like, oh, okay. So there's another thing. And like, you know, it's just, and then little by little looking at the plans as in operations, you know, it's going to be, you're going to start building it. So you're going to see it. But in pre-con, you are not always there. Thankfully, New South really pushes us to go out on job sites. Like yeah. we have minimum one, once a month, minimum, we go out on a job site that we worked on and we see whatever it is, which has been amazing, honestly. But um, going back to that, it's like you have to build build it completely if you don't have a model, which we do sometimes. But if you don't have it, you have to build it up and like think about all of these things to make it happen. And I feel like my engineering side goes very well with that because you're just designing. Here I'm not designing it, but it's still my head only. And that's that's the key, right? And your APM, so assistant project manager experience, a project manager experience, a GEA signal, that would have an integrated solution, sorry, that would have been so beneficial to you in pre-construction. And as you say, we are all visual people. Everyone in the world, I think it's, they worked it out 76, 77% of us are visual. We take information in through our eyes rather yeah. than that than, than through your ears. And then what what obviously Someone like you, a graduate, so sec, you're doing it in your second language, firstly, and then yeah. you're coming into it relatively inexperienced and being given all this information. Surely there's a thought of being overwhelmed. I mean, how did you get over that? And what was it just a case of, you know what, this seems overwhelming and it seems like I can't do it, but I'm going to throw myself at it anyway. Yeah, um, definitely. I feel like that comes from engineering is not easy and you're overwhelmed all the time with new information so i feel like it's great to get exposed to all of this information in pre-con and i will say to like any so you're in 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 school and you're getting all of this information if you don't learn it you don't pass so you don't graduate so you are like on that mode and then working a full time in construction and studying engineer that was like more but I was kind of like I just need to go 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 and that, that I guess that was my motivation and now that I'm graduated uh, which I recommend everybody if you can have if, if you are still in school and whatever it is your major related with construction find a uh, Try to get internships because that's exactly what's going to tell you what you want before you are out there for real. Um, like for me, like I'm the best example. I thought I wanted to do civil and no, I ended up in construction. So, um, but then here it is overwhelming, but at the same time, I think it's very beneficial because in pre-con you are, you're able to get exposed to three to four projects or even more, I've been here for almost a year and I've been probably in around eight projects already of like completely different sectors. So if you have that ability of like get all that information and like learn it like fast, take advantage of that in your first years after you graduate because you're still on that mode and it's kind of like, I got to do it. Like, I just got to do it. But another thing that also helps me when you know sometimes I feel like it's fine maybe not people because mo mostly you're not gonna know you have a mentor until you already have it because that's what's happening in my life like listen to like your senior managers listen to what they say like calm down I know that this is the time for you to learn and then you're gonna when you get the experience, it's going to be completely different and find ways to get motivated. Because one thing is like, do like go and do it. And another thing is like doing it while you're motivated and you're excited about doing it. And I feel like tools like 
the pre-construction podcast, being on LinkedIn and instead of like scrolling in regular social media, but you're in LinkedIn and you're like learning about all these new things that are happening and imagining that you're going to be part of that or listening to the pre-construction podcast and hear somebody that's been working on this for 30 years and listening to all the amazing things they're doing that they're a vice president and like part of a board on an association it's like okay if they could do it I can do it I just gotta like keep pushing and learn as much as I can but of course it's different when you're motivated and when you're not and I the best thing is like just try to keep yourself motivated with information that's going to help you wake up every day and be like let me go let me go and get it all and give the best of me for sure you're 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 a passionate sponge that's what I, i'm getting from this you're so passionate about what you do but you're also a sponge and taking in information what you just described there now about internships and about and about working full time where you're studying a degree there is a common denominator in that and the fact that it it, it breeds success the, the, the people that I've interviewed at VP level, executive level, C-suite level that have got to the top the quickest, they all did that. They all threw themselves into anything that came about them, did not think about the consequences, absorbed all the information, studied at the same time, and they grew much, much faster in their careers than everyone else. So that's brilliant advice, Laura. Um, the other thing I wanted to say, obviously, it's called the next generation of uh, the pre-construction leaders, right? What it, it, you, you've said there, you're at New South now for a year. What has New South done well, and what can GCs do better for people coming into the industry? Um, you mean as like me getting in here, like as a new, or like just in general? Yeah, just in general, and and the fact oh. that within pre construction as well, you can you can you can uh, talk about it in construction in general, but within pre construction, uh, how do we ta- how do we get better at our job, make our jobs easier? Yeah. I mean, I'm talking about culture, I'm talking about flexibility, I'm talking about technology, I'm talking about all the things that are important. Yeah, no, I mean, I was very lucky to be in New South. Uh, I'm honestly like I've been here for a year and it's been an amazing experience. First of all, cultural, the culture of the company, it's amazing. Um, Since I'm here, all they try to do is like teach me, give me opportunities. Um, Tell me like, I know you've never done this but I trust you, go ahead, do it. And if you have questions, come here and like, I will help you. Um, oh, do you want to be a part of like Hispanic Association in Construction? Go ahead, we support you. So that, I feel like that in a company, any company, it's amazing because you feel like they care about you. Mm-hmm. And I see it not only me that I'm just arriving, I see it in everybody else, seniors. And um, also something great it's like you are they push employees to create relationships outside of your department because they are a big you are you see but the fact that you are working in pre-construction doesn't mean that you don't need to create a relationship with your project managers to for you to be able to be a successful pre-construction uh project like a pre-con manager or whatever you need to understand all parts of construction. Um, that way you anticipate any problem. If you have great communication with them, you learn what you didn't do right in the other um uh in that project so that way you can learn. So something that's really cool is that whenever we go to job sites that we go, we try to go at least once a month. It's like the first 10 to 20 minutes. Once we get there, we sit down with operations and we get an update of the of the um, of the project. And then any of the seniors is going to ask them, OK, in these last three months that we haven't be he- been here, what has happened that we can improve as a in pre-con that we that can avoid those problems that already happen so I feel like that's something that is great. You get to understand the whole process, but learning from operations makes us better in what we do for next projects. And for a reason, New South has 90% of uh, repetitive um, owners. We work with the same owners, the same clients, 90% of the time. It's because we do extra stuff. New South does extra stuff that 
it's gonna make us better with that client or any other client. Um, push they they push a lot on like our VE opportunities when we have our schedule when we're gonna give give a bid away. I don't know if this is something that everybody does, but it's something really cool. And I think we sit down for two days in our schedule. We have two days of VEs. Like you've been thinking obviously of VEs the whole time. You've been pricing this job then you have two exclusive days that you should dedicate them to think about your ves talk to your subcontractors what do they think that we can provide the owner and it's like we to be able to provide like the most value to the owner um and also they're very open to like um for example to a few days ago i was talking to my senior uh, which is like a role model for me she's amazing um about oh yeah 4g modeling yeah that will be so awesome like yeah like oh building she was explaining everything about like yeah building design and like you have a really good mix that that we can bring all the new stuff to precon like we have one of my co-workers is like and he he codes like yeah. and here everybody's like oh yeah he's the best at this like, what do you want to do? Oh, do you want to fix or, uh, I don't know, or estimating shit? There, there you go. Go ahead. Like, do it. Take two days. And, you know, so, like, we have that freedom of, like, yeah. let me do what I'm good at and let me, and they push you to do it. Yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant. And that's what you want. You need autonomy. As you say, every team is completely diverse. So you've got to, and, and we, we talked about this in a previous podcast is pre-construction teams are going to look very different in the future. It's not just going to be f four or five estimators. It's going to be a data engineer. It's going to be a VDC BIM modeler. It's going to be a traditional pre-construction manager. And then it might be a, a pre-construction manager who's incredible with, with the clients. Um, yeah. One thing I always like asking as well, especially to the, to the to the people just coming into the industry what do you enjoy most about the, the pre-construction is it the client interaction is it the scheduling is it the costing is it the technology is it the value engineering is there anything that that kind of has surprised you you think wow i didn't know I, I would enjoy that as much uh definitely like building relationships either with owners or subcontractors i feel like it's like the most important thing and i really enjoyed it. i didn't you know, that sales aspect of not only sales, but like actually creating long lasting relationships with them, which is not easy. And mostly when you're starting, because it's like they have already a relationship of five years with a project ma pre com manager, but you have to like go and like actually care about it. It's like, it's not just numbers and like plans, it's people. It's like you need to generally care about people. That way you can like, enjoy that part of um precon and also something that it's very exciting for me is um in the part of technology is like we all which is how we get modeling models once in a while but we've been talking we have a whole uh bam team but obviously um it's exciting when we get models and like because it's like just walking through it. I don't know if you've ever played The Sims. But yeah, anything, yeah. Oh, like, everybody. I used to love it. Yeah. So whenever a rabbit, a rabbit file comes, I'm like, oh my god, this is the, this is like, is the same feeling. It's like okay, <laughs> this is ten times better. So it's like very. That's something that I'm excited about. I feel like it's coming. It's definitely coming more, and it's be more important. Um. And like the level of detail that it's gonna get to, like right now it's just a wall, but maybe later it's gonna be like, okay, you got your insulation, your play wood, your, and you're gonna be able to see all of that and make it more automatic to count all of those things. Um, love making, love, I love grabbing the 2D plan and building it 3D in my head. I love it, but obviously it's a different feeling when you're actually walking your project on the computer so those are two things that i really enjoy about pregon love it and let's all hope laura that we're getting bim models revit models and the quantities <laughs> are in it and everything's there so all you're doing is build it in your head putting numbers in there and then communicating that with the client um i love it yeah. and i think what you said as well is very important especially for the people coming up 
you your network is so, so important the fact that the penny has dropped with you already at such a young age it's incredible that will stand you to you throughout your career um last question now piece of advice advice if, if someone at high school came to you and asked for your advice on a career and asked to talk to you about construction what sort of advice would you give them and especially if it was a female um if they're in high school that's different that I feel like that answer w- will be different if they're in college and knowing what they're studying than in high school but I will definitely say that uh first of all construction needs one of the m- most amazing careers that you can have since the beginning of human history the amazing things that humans have been able to create for years in construction I think it's the most exciting thing and that whatever you feel like you have a potential in if you either a creative person you're a detailed person you are a a leader and a manager and and or you're like hands-on person there is going to be a place for you in construction and um if you are a woman just be persistent don't change who you think you are because that makes you different um many many times many many times at the beginning of my I'm still at the beginning of my career but like at the most beginning um I would go to like and meeting with uh, GCs and owners or whatever and they will be like don't you want to wear boots like why are you in like I was in heels and like blazer and it's like do you want to wear like jeans and boots just to like and I will be like, no, because this is who I am and this is what I'm bringing to the table. This is the difference that a man cannot bring on the table. So be be sure on who you are and don't don't let it change because construction is changing. And, and there is going to be like, you know, we are having a bigger voice in it because as you have mentioned before, women are very detail oriented. So don't let that don't let that construction is uh it's it's a place for only men or like for dirty men or like no there is a space here and pre-construction is a great place for that because you're gonna be working directly with designers and owners and like trying to understand everything so this project can be built so if the job site is not for you you have a place but if the job site is for you then you know, it's it's just amazing. I love construction. I will definitely recom- like recommend everybody to like just keep an eye on it because whatever you want to do, there's gonna be a place for you there. And and that's all I think we're asking for 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 a-, a teachers in high schools to let their students know that it's an option, but also talk about it in that way that it's not just hard hat men in dirty boots. It's it's actually pre construction. It's technology. It's modeling. And then there is the, the building side of it as well. Then the subcontractor. And it's a business. Like if people will understand in high school that construction is a business that needs all, like it's not just technology. It's also administration, insurance. Like there is insurance for other um, businesses, not the same. So it's you, whatever you want, it's in construction. Yeah. So Yeah. I, I love it. I love your passion, honestly. I cannot wait to follow your career, Laura. Um, this has been fantastic. I know that the audience will get some real value from it. And hopefully we've bred a few more uh, young female pre-construction engineers. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you for inspiring people like me to keep to come to work happy every day and excited what we're doing. Wonderful. <laughs>